I have owned an Oldtronics power supply before, this late 80s single output one. And honestly, I didn't like it much because of poor maintainability. You will find out what I mean by that in a moment, because the subject of this video, a more recent model, still has the same issues. But let's keep it positive, for now at least. It's a very versatile power supply in a compact enclosure, and the front panel is designed rather beautifully in my opinion. This is what I got delivered for 90 euros. The red channel digital readout is slightly off. The yellow channel potentiometer knob is difficult to turn. And the green channel digital readout shows inconclusive garbage almost all the time. So let's have a little peek inside and see what we can do about those problems. Here's where the fun starts. All those cables are soldered and they can only be detached by taking out all those transistor sockets. There are no markings of course to tell you which transistor socket goes where. So I don't feel like removing any now. That's why when tipping over the device the weight of the top cover puts strain on the cables. Now those bottom and side covers come off and we are left with three almost freely standing aluminum plates. Circuit boards and cables prevent them from falling over, but those heavy transformers are adding a lot of strain to those fragile components. To make matters worse, many short cables are directly soldered onto the PCB. So you cannot spread out this arrangement any further than this. And those cables that are equipped with proper connectors are neither labeled nor are the connectors unique. So you have to document everything that you unplug. Here's how to disconnect those transistor sockets, which can give you a tiny bit more room. Two screws from underneath two screws from above and just pull it off. Pretty neat design actually. Too bad they didn't follow this no solder philosophy all the way through. The digital voltmeters are mounted in the front panel with these springy retainers. Not very difficult to unclamp but extremely fiddly to get back in. And the connectors to these are absolutely ridiculous. Cable to pin header connector, rectangular pin headers in those, soldered into a bisected IC socket. And those are just plugged directly into the panel meters. If one falls out, well, good luck to you. These digital voltmeters do not have to be taken apart because A, the brightness and the fine adjustment potentiometers 
can be reached through holes in the enclosure. B. The fine adjustment can be done with the potentiometer on the main board of the power supply. C. These were spot on, at least in my case. But I'll show you anyway, even though there's nothing exciting in there. Just an 8-pin voltage reference, jelly bean, CMOS part, and a big integrated voltmeter and 7-segment display driver. The manual, including the pinout, can still be found on the German manufacturer's website. For some reason I didn't film the disassembly of the potentiometer and mechanical counter, so here is a reversed clip of the reassembly. Knob cap, collet knob, knurled locking ring, dust proof washer are removed as usual. Then you can unlock the gear from the extension shaft by loosening two Phillips head screws. Then you can carefully unscrew the nut that holds in the actual potentiometer and pull that out. And then you can carefully unscrew the nut that holds in the mechanical counter and you are done. The immobility of the potentiometer knob clearly came from the fitting of this extension rod in the lockable brass bushing. A bit of penetrating oil did not help at all, so I used this crude but effective automotive valve lapping technique. I applied some metal polishing compound to both parts and now I'm just rubbing their surfaces together to polish out any high spots. With the polishing compound getting lightly grey, we can clearly see that this was a success. The misbehavior of the green channel could easily be explained by a broken LM358 double op amp. And because I had it in stock, and it was right there in front of me, conveniently socketed, I just replaced it. And that actually fixed it. Well, at least the voltage output. The digital readout is another story I'll cover next. The voltmeter seemed to show whatever it wanted, whenever it wanted. And at first I suspected the switch because I had so many failed switches in my electroform and modular synthesizer. When that led to nothing, I basically had to poke around at all of these components. And I did that for a ridiculous amount of time. When suddenly I found this loose cable. It had of course been soldered directly to the board and come loose because of either my wrangling of this heavy power supply on the table or because of existing in a world where there are vibrations from time to time. Well, it took another pinhole surgery to reattach that, and that was the end of it, pretty much. But now the red channel started being difficult. I even got some magic smoke out of it. 
Sorry for my holiday beard sneaking into the shot here. But to cut another long story short, that was just an incorrectly placed connector, which would not have happened if they were labeled or unique. But that's all fixed now and we can start calibrating the output voltages. Since there's no calibration procedure in the manual, I just have to make that up and figure out the appropriate potentiometers for whatever I need to set from the schematic. I'll post a link to an augmented photo of the potentiometer holes in the circuit board in the description of this video. As a calibration procedure, I'd suggest to first align the multi-turn potentiometer end stops with the end stops of the mechanical counters and then as a second step set the correct output voltages with the trim pots on the circuit board. Alright, that's about it for this video. Sorry that the production value was relatively low this time. The repair job itself was quite exhaustive already. I didn't have much energy left to put in this video. My final verdict on Ultronics power supplies is good components, terrible wiring, beautiful user interface fairly unreliable, but if you have the patience to do a lengthy repair like this, you get great value for your money. An equivalent power supply would cost hundreds of dollars, even if you buy it from China. And now this awesome Christmas present needs repairing too, but I think I'll take a short break before that. <laughs> 